Hey guys, just thought I'd make a little vlog real quick here to actually put your mind at ease. Um, yeah, we're getting some winds already. <laughs> And, uh, but it should be fine. I suspect because that panel has been loose, that might be the only thing we lose. And, uh, it's not a big deal because we've been planning to replace it anyways. Um, so I'm going to be turning off the lights in case of storm surge. So we, we have, uh, surge protectors on all our lights. And, uh, been through lots of hurricanes over the last 40 plus years of my life that I've lived here in Florida. And uh, we don't really worry too much about tropical storms or uh, category one. It's not until it reaches category two and a half that we start to get a little worried. Let me uh, take you guys back inside so I don't have to talk so loud. And right now this just looks like a regular afternoon thunder shower at the moment. All right, we're back inside. Here I am in my room. And I've got the lights off. It's quiet and relaxing. Only my cockatiel is screaming at the moment. And I'm waiting for Chris to come home because, uh, as some of you know, his job is a leak detector. So he works for the plumbing companies. They hire him, the company out. He comes out and he finds leaks on plumbing and toilets and showers and stuff like that. He has microphones and listening devices and equipment. Of course, you can't hear anything when it's raining. All you hear is rain, so we can't do jobs. I think we get a day off tomorrow. I love hurricane days. Uh, for us native Floridians that we've been through so many of these things, don't let the media scare you. I mean, it's just really not that big a deal. And uh, it should be fine. We also have plenty of supplies. We got a generator. We have food. We have water. We have two vehicles that are fully gassed up and... So we're not so worried. If a big one ever came our way, we can go to Georgia or go somewhere else and come back. So, we have budgies. And there's Whitey and Minion and Emma and Nautica. And the other birds are actually inside the house. Uh, we actually brought them inside because of 4th of July. Ooh, that's a big lightning. Wait for it. There we go, thunder. Um, because the neighbor in the backyard was shooting off fireworks and the poor budgies nearly had a heart attack. 4th of July can be scary for little birds that have sensitive ears. And we brought them inside and then we figured Eh, just in case they get scared of the storm if the winds are pretty bad, though. They've seen a lot of storms, too, but we're just going to leave them inside for now. Whitey is talking. I love you, too, Whitey. I'll put you guys closer. Maybe you can hear her talk. So, uh, best hold the camera. You guys can see her. There we go. <laughs> So, yeah, I've been really busy with uh, taking care of frogs and tadpoles, and I'm really enjoying this new hobby. And Whitey is coming to the camera. She's right there. Hi, Whitey. Uh, before I started filming this, I was actually working on making some tadpole tea and some new stuff I got for an unboxing I'm going to show you guys. And... Uh, you guys probably know that I've gotten into isopods as well, and I wanted to tell you the story of how that happened. I think I have six species of isopods now in my house. Those are the little roly-polies. Depending on where you're from, I grew up, we used to call them roly-polies because they roll up. Um, some people call them pill bugs. Some people call them wood lice. But yeah, they're, they're the, all the same thing. Roly-poly and isopod. And, well, if you saw my video of when I built my first uh, tank for the frogs, I put those really pretty uh, orange isopods in there, and they did not last. They got eaten by the frogs. I thought they were going to burrow into the soil, and the frogs wouldn't find them, but no. And all the springtails, everything got eaten. Um, and I didn't have enough of them left 
to start a new colony. I think I had five left. So I went back to the pet store and I bought more and instead of putting them into the tanks for bioactive, I set them up into enclosures because I am going to uh, be growing them. And then once I get a decent sized population, then we'll uh, start using some of them for bioactive terrariums. And as a kid, I used to play with the roly-polies. I remember being in first grade and going into the playground, and my classmates and I, we would get in the dirt and dig things up. Are you going to talk? So yeah, we would, we would, she just said blabberbeak. <laughs> okay, a little bit about that in a bit. bit. So, we used to catch them, and we used to put them in the sandbox and make forts and castles for them, and it was really, really just a fun memory, and Chris remembers seeing them and growing up, and he used to play with them too, so. Chris is an awesome husband. He was all for me buying roly-polies and collecting them and setting them up. So, hopefully he'll come home soon. But yeah, I'm planning to do some more videos unboxing other kinds of isopods out there. Now, Miss Whiteykins here. Um, I have been calling Minion the Blabberbeak because you guys know his also other nickname is uh, Mr. 200 because he says over 200 words. And I've been trying to teach him to say Blabberbeak. He can say Blabber, but he doesn't say Blabberbeak. Because you are a blabberbeak. Boop! Blabberbeak. He doesn't say it. And female budgies don't talk as much, but Whitey has learned to say blabberbeak. She's a blabberbeak, aren't you, Whitey? So, I am proud of Whitey because she has one phrase in her short vocabulary. Yes! Ooh! She has one phrase in her short, short vocabulary that Minion... Hi, Whitey, that Minion has never been able to master. She can say Blabberbeak, and Minion cannot. It would be great if Minion actually learned that from her. That's right, Blabberbeaks. That's what you two are, because you guys talk a lot for budgies. <laughs> Alright, guys, so things are going well. Oh, and hope you all had a great 4th of July. Sorry that I'm late with that. Uh, Chris and I celebrated not just 4th of July, but every 4th we celebrate and observe because the 4ths are our anniversary. So it was Independence Day of our great nation and our 25th and our 5th month, 25-5 anniversary celebration. Alright, hope you guys are having a good one. So there, see that thunderstorm? It's already past. Wait for the next one. Scattered thunder afternoon thunder showers. That's how it goes here in Florida. In fact, back in the 80s, you could literally set your clock by afternoon thunderstorms. They would come at 3 p.m. on the dot daily all summer and sometimes in the fall. And it was annoying because at 3 p.m. was when afternoon cartoons were on. And it was really difficult to watch cartoons because the power would be going out all the time. Especially in Tampa, because uh, Tampa is one of the most lightning-prone areas in Florida. In fact, I know Florida is the lightning capital of the U.S., I think. And of all the areas, I know Tampa definitely gets way more than other places. By the way, speaking of 4th of July, this is my uh, Star Spangled, not Star Spangled Banner, um, Stars and Stripes Forever music box. Let me uh, put you guys down and pick it up. I'll wind it up. I love this thing. Alright, let's end on this note. <laughs>